this is uh, Professor Gelmet, and uh, you know, let me know in the comments if you like the picture-in-picture -picture thing. I'm trying it out, so I'd love to hear what you guys think. Um, but to get right to the point, today what we want to do is we want to talk about box plots and outliers, right? Uh, so in this video, we're going to work with a uh, box plot, um, sometimes called a box and whisker plot for obvious reasons because of the shape, and outliers, right? So um, box plots and the five number summary lend themselves to the calculation of outliers, so we're going to talk about that too, right? So I think the easiest way to do this is with StatCrunch. You don't have to do it that way. I know that I have uh, um, people who watch the video who aren't my students, so you can do it with a TI calculator. It's a very similar process. Um, so I'm going to show you how to work with StatCrunch and create some plots and calculate the outliers, right? Um, so, so what is a box plot, right? Well, basically a box plot is a visual representation of the five number summary, right? And you're like, wait, what, what's the five number summary? Well, the five numbers in the five number summary are the minimum value, the first quartile, the median, quartile three, and the maximum values, okay? So these values divide the data into quarters, which is why this is called quartile one, and this is called quartile three, okay? Um, the median is sort of the special name for quartile two. And so 25% of the data is in each section of the box plot or quartile, right? And so you actually have 25% of the data is between the minimum and quartile one, 25% uh, of the data is between quartile one and the median, and so on and so forth. Um, but even more important, you can actually see the center and spread of the data at a glance. And I think this is the real power, is the ability to see these things that we talk about, right? Shape, center, spread. The center and spread are really easy to see in a box plot because the range is represented by the minimum and maximum value, right? Min minus max. And those are the two of the values. Um, the interquartile range, right? That middle 50% is represented um, by Q3 minus Q1, right? So Q1 and Q3 are there. Um, and of course, the center is the median, right? That's a, a central value, especially for a skewed distribution. And so those five numbers of the five number summary um, divide everything into a quarter and allow you to see the center, the median, the typical spread, the IQR, and the maximum amount of spread, the range, okay? So what's an outlier, right? That's a really good question. Um, so for quantitative, data uh, for it with a single variable, right? Because in uh, future, we're going to talk about linear regression, right? We have an accepted definition. Um, and so the value is extreme, right? Or an outlier. That's what we're talking about with an outlier, right? It's an extreme value. The value is less than Q1 minus 1.5 times the IQR, all right? So if it's below that, it's an extreme value. Um, and then, of course, if it's above Q3 um, plus 1.5 times the IQR, right? So that's the formula for determining an outlier. Uh, and so, oh, hold on. I'm going to, I want this to go up just a little bit. Um, so why is this the definition? Like, why, why do we use this formula to determine an outlier? Well, it works. Right, I mean that's that's one thing. Over time, we feel feel like this is pretty good. It's as good as anything else. Um, you know, I, there are other ways of finding an outlier, and people probably have other ideas about what consists of an a value that's extreme. Um, but really, because the IQR is a typical spread of data, um, what we're saying here is is that if you're one and a half times further than the typical spread, that seems pretty extreme. And so that's where this definition comes from. It's because the IQR is the typical spread of data. And if you're one and a half times that typical spread from the center, that that seems pretty extreme. And there, there aren't typically a lot of outliers using this definition. So, so that's why it actually works. All right. If we had changed it to anything else, we might get a lot more outliers, and then we might say that's not working as good as something as else, right? So, what's the best way to get the five number summary, right? Well, 
I'm really glad you asked that question. Uh, the best way is to use technology to sort the data and divide it up, right? Um, in fact, you can make a modified box plot. And so the TI calculator, StatCrunch, um, I guess even SPSS probably, you can make a modified box plot. And modified means that um, it will actually sh do the calculation for the outlier and show them as dots past the box plot, right? So it's modified with outliers. Um, and so the outlier calculation uh, is also done for you. And so I'm going to show you how to do this in StatCrunch. A lot of videos show you how to do this in the TI calculator, but um, this is, so we're going to use StatCrunch. So here I actually have some uh, real data. So let's take a look at my real data that I have. Um, this is some epilepsy uh, drug data. All right. And so what we see here. Uh, I'm gonna slide it up just so you can see it a little bit better, right? So here's the epilepsy drug uh, versus placebo, right? And so you've got the participant number, whether they were in the placebo or the treatment group, uh, the base measurement of the number, their age, and then the seizures at follow-ups, right? So how many seizures at follow-ups? Um, and this is the data that I actually want to look at right here. Now, previously, we might have done something of a single quantitative variable, right? They, the values look like they go up to about 37, um, which seems really high uh, for this sample size, right? So what I could do is I could um, graph as a histogram this. And what I could do is I could do seizures at follow-up, and I could look at a histogram of that data. Now, it turns out that there's a placebo group and a treatment group of pro progabed 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 whatever that is okay and so we actually have two different groups of data so what I'd really like to do is I'd like to group the data by the treatment and this will separate out those that were in the placebo group and those that were in the treatment group and this will allow us to make a comparison okay and so what I'll do is I'll scroll down um, and you can't see it because it's at the bottom but I'm gonna click on compute at the bottom of the wizard and what you'll see is Here's the uh, treatment placebo, and you'll see this right skew, right? And then if I click, oh, I'm gonna bring it up just a little bit. If I click this guy, you'll actually see the uh, promoglide, right? And it also actually has a right um, skew to it. So this is um, right skew data, right? And so this is how you would do the histogram. But what if you want the five number summary? What if you actually want to determine whether there's some outliers, right? What if, what if you want to figure out whether that 37 is um, inside of the outlier range or it really is an outlier? So what we're going to do here is we're going to hit graph again. Now we're going to go below histogram one more, two more down to box plot, right? And obviously I'm going to click on that. And again, I've got this wizard that comes up that's really going to help me walk through this. Okay, and what I, again, I want to look at seizures at follow-ups, <clears throat> and I definitely want to group it by treatment. You will not always have a group that you need to separate the data by, um, but it doesn't make a lot of sense to have the, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, the placebo folks seizures with the treatment folks seizures. That seems like two separate things um, that we need to, to pull out, okay? Now, here's the really important part. Okay, what we're gonna do now is use fences to identify outliers. And what does it mean, fences, right? Well, the fences is this, right? This value right here creates a fence, and anything that's below that, any value that's below that fence is considered an outlier, and it's gonna get a dot outside of the box plot. And then, of course, this calculation is an upper fence, and any value that is above that is gonna be an outlier, right? So these are the fence calculations, and anything past the fence um, is going to be considered an outlier. Hopefully that wasn't too much clicking around. All right, so let's go back. And then for me personally, I like to draw the boxes horizontally. I, I think this is a personal preference, but I like it. Um, I don't think it's worth it to, to click on the mean and median. Um, the median is going to be a central value. It's gonna be in the box plot. And the mean, we already know it's skewed. This is the reason why we're doing a box plot instead of a histogram, because of the skewed um, nature of it. And so uh, I can certainly label the x-axis. The x-axis is the um, number of uh, seizures. Not, that's probably. 
probably not spelled right. Right, so the number of Caesars. And the Y uh, axis label is, is of course, the um, treatment, right? And then the title would be a comparison of um, seizures oh e before i somebody would have left that in a comment um comparison of seizures oh i'm gonna scooch this over um a comparison of seizures right um after treatment okay so that we can take a look at this. And so I'm gonna click on compute. Again, you can't you can't see it, but down below the bottom of the video, there's a little compute box. And so there we go. Um, and so here's our here's our lovely uh, box plot of our data. Um, and it is a comparison of the seizures because here's the treatment promoglide, right? And as you can see here, there are actually three outliers. Um, 18, 19, and 22 are past this last value, right? Um, right here so so the fence is probably somewhere in here and these are past it okay um, and the box plot is going to the last this 11 is the last data point before the fence um, and then of course here's the placebo group and they have two outliers uh, 37 and 40 oh there, there was a 40 I didn't even see all right but what's the best way to get the five number summary right here's my visual representation of the five number summary but what is the actual five number summary well, if you hover over it, right, you can totally see um, that for the progabid, um, there were 31 values, so, uh, and there were three outliers, and you can see those three dots. And so the IQR is six, so it actually goes the extra step. And the TI calculator it won't calculate that. Um, it tells you what the IQR is. The lower limit is zero. The median is four. Q3 is uh, eight. The upper limit is 11 before the fence, but really the maximum value is 22. And so, you know, I guess it would depend on what your professor wants, but mo usually the five number summary, you would want that 22 to be that maximum value, not the um, 11, all right? And then for the placebo, again, I just hover over it and you can see all of the same facts. And of course, the upper limit of 26, again, is just that upper value before the fence. And really, the maximum value is a 40. Now, here's kind of a cool thing um, with StatCrunch is if you wanted to actually see those outliers, if you click on them, they'll become pink, right? And so as they're pink, if I go ahead and close this out and look, I can actually find the 40, the 37. And if I scroll down, I can find the... Um, 18, 19, and 22 that were in the promoglide group, right? And so you can actually find where the outliers are. And so maybe it's an age thing. Maybe you could look at the ages. Maybe you could look at the base measurement. Maybe there's something there. I don't know. Um, and so you can do those. Uh, let's do one more. Let's look at the base measurement. And so let's go ahead and graph the histogram of the base measurement. Again, grouping it by treatment. Um, one of the things that I like to do Oh, there's the compute. One of the things that I like to do is um, to use the same X and Y axis, right, for these, and to do t um, two rows per page when I'm doing this kind of comparison. And so now when I click compute, uh, what you'll see is both of the graphs there. And man, look at that uh, group. So with the, the treatment group, right, here's the base number of um, seizures that they were looking at or base number of some medic something there's a base measure of something um, and so you can actually see the the placebo group um, maybe is a little different uh, from the treatment group so that may be causing an issue um, but let's look so like is this is this out here is that an outlier is this out here is that an outlier like I'm looking at this skew maybe a box plot would be better so let's go ahead and graph the box plot of the base measurement grouping by Oops, grouping by treatment. Again, we want to use fences and draw horizontally. I'm not going to type in all of the other fun stuff, um, but I am going to hit compute. And so what we do see is um, there are two outliers to this end. No outliers on this end, right? So that's why there's no dots. Uh, the, the medians are a little bit different, 19 and 
uh, 22. You'll notice the interquartile range here is uh, 37. The interquartile range here is 25. So there is a little bit of difference uh, between the two between the two groups. And we might want to control for that if we were doing some advanced analysis. All right. So um, I I hope that you understand this type of plot better. Um, and if you do, that makes me happy. Um, I guess I guess one thing that I might want to do is is actually do the IQR calculation. Um, so let me go ahead and graph one last time. So there's my box plot. There's my seizure group. Um, there's my treatment. I clicked compute. Um, oh no, I forgot my uh, fences and outliers. Right. Uh, so what we've got here for the promaglide group, we've got an IQR of six. Okay, so I'm gonna put my uh, IQR here. So what values, uh, not this one, this one, right? So what values, right, are greater than, what's my Q3? So Q3 here is eight. So I'm gonna put eight in here, uh, plus 1.5 times the six, that's the IQR, right? And so um, one and a half times six is nine. So you have eight plus nine. And then of course, eight plus nine is uh, 17. And so of course, anything greater than 17 is gonna be an outlier. And so what we'll notice here is there is 18. And so the fence is right here at 17. There's my outlier at 18 and that's why it's an outlier. Right? And we could do the same thing for uh, the placebo group if we wanted to. But I think that's probably good. I mean, it's a pretty simple calculation. All right? Um, and so, uh, you know, if you understand this better, that makes me happy. And so, till next time.